Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for convening here in the Rogers Media Center at Air Canada Center under such quick turnaround conditions for everybody. We're joined by Tom and Selmy and Dave Nonis. The format will be as follows. We'll have statements from both Tom and Dave, and then we'll open up the questions from the floor. I would ask that you please wait for the boom mic that is available before you ask your questions. So I'll now turn it over to Tom and Selmy. Thank you, uh, Pat. Good afternoon, everyone. And like Pat said, thanks for getting here on such short notice and, uh, and also on uh, what is a busy hockey news day and uh, one that is now full of some mixed emotions. Um, for the last 18 months, you know, our organization, we've been driving a lot of change in this organization. And, you know, that includes the sale of the company. It includes uh, the transition to new ownership, new leadership, new priorities. And since the closing of the sale in August, I've spent a lot of time working closely with our board as they evaluated our organization and its people and the long-term direction of our teams. And so part of that assessment involved taking a look at the Maple Leafs and our hockey organization. And as a result of that, we've decided to make a leadership change and move in a different direction for the general manager role. And so with that, I'm pleased to appoint Dave Nonis, the 14th general manager in the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, you all know Dave. Uh, he is a well-respected hockey executive with superb credentials. He has a great team of people behind him. Uh, our board and myself, we are very confident in Dave's leadership style. will be a great fit for our team and for this community. Earlier this morning, um, Brian Burke was relieved of his duties as the president and GM of the Leafs but he will stay on as a senior advisor to myself and the board. I want to thank Brian for his tremendous commitment, dedication, and service to this organization. He's, uh, you all know him, he's a man of great passion, integrity, principles, he's a friend. He's clearly made an indelible mark on this community and our, and our hockey club. And I think probably one of Brian's greatest legacies was building a really deep front office with strong people and we're fortunate that we can tap into that and benefit from that depth and succession to make this move today. So with that, let me formally welcome Dave Nonis, the 14th General Manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, I'll be fairly brief. Um, first of all, I, I want to thank Brian for everything he's done for this organization. I think uh, years down the road, we'll be able to look back and see the mark that he made, uh, which is significant. Uh, Second, I'd like to thank him personally for everything he's done to, done for me. I worked for Brian for most of my adult life, and uh, he's uh, always been a, a great friend and mentor. Second, I want to thank the ownership group for their faith in us as a management team to allow us to continue to build this franchise. I think we've come a long way. We still have a long way to go, and as a, as a group, uh, we really thank them for their support and faith in us to continue this. We have a quality staff in place. Uh, Cliff Fletcher brings a great deal of experience. So obviously anyone in Toronto knows what he's done here. He's uh, always been a great resource for myself and for our management group and will continue to do so. Um, Dave Poole and Claude Loisel, uh, both are quality, quality executives, both played in this league, both understand what it takes to win and they will continue to, to work uh, with me uh, to move this franchise forward. Uh, finally, um, our coaching staff. Uh, we have a very good coaching staff in place. Randy is um, is a quality head coach. He worked for me uh, before um, in in Manitoba. We go back a fair ways. The assistants, I, th I think, are are excellent. They've meshed very well with uh, with Randy. Uh, and again, going forward. We're very happy that uh, we have them here with us. Um, we're going to have a very short window to make some difficult decisions going forward. Um, we don't know exactly when that start date is, um, but we've been preparing for it with meetings in the last several days. We'll continue to do that, and once we get the green light, we're going to again we're going to have a very short window in order to make some decisions about this hockey team, and we're going to uh, focus on that right now. So with that, I'd open it up to Parky. Any okay. questions you may have. Please wait for the microphone, Rosie. Uh, Rosie Demano, Toronto Star. Tom, I'm just a little bit unclear. Was this your decision, or was this a decision that um, you re relayed from the board, from somebody else? 
Uh, this is a decision that uh, that uh, the board and myself collectively made, Rosie, and uh, you know it's it's the product of uh, you know a conversation that's been going on for some time. Uh, you know since the uh, sale closed back in August. Uh, you know it's not the product of any one incident or any one thing. Uh, you know it was really a conversation uh, where uh, you know the uh, the three shareholders and myself uh, came to a decision, and then finally uh, once the decision was made. Uh, you know, it only makes sense and it's fairest to, to, to deal with it. Uh, Kevin, the Toronto Star, why now? Why not in June? Why not let the season start, see how things go? Why now? Yeah, no good question, uh, Kevin. I mean, there's, first of all, there's no good time to do this. Um, and, and like I was saying earlier, I mean, you know, once you, once you get to a decision uh, on something like this, it's really only fair to, to act upon it. It's, it's fairest for our fans, it's fairest for the people involved, it's fairest for, uh, for everybody. You know, you can't, you know, you can't fake it. And, uh, you know, the relationship between a general manager and ownership is a, is a very complex and different relationship. It's, uh, uh, you know, and it has to work uh, long term. And if, uh, if there's, uh, if you decided that it's not going to work long term, you're best to deal with it and deal with it expeditiously. And obviously this year is complicated. You know, with a uh, you know a, a, a sale that closed and, and and a new ownership group coming together, and then all of a sudden we're in a lockout, and now we've got a week to get ready for a season. And it just made sense to get ready and deal with it as quickly as possible, so these guys can prepare for uh, uh, for what's going to be a sprint to the finish line. Uh, Mr. Nonis, uh, Sofia Yerkshevich from the Score. How long have you been involved in this conversation, and um, have you had a chance to talk to Mr. Burke yet? I was informed of the ownership group's decision this morning. Uh, after they had spoken to Brian. Um, and yes, I have had a brief conversation with Brian where, uh, again, we've gone back a long way. He's pledged to help me as much as he can, as he always has. And uh, uh, I expect I'll talk to him again in the, the next day or two. Steve. Tom, Steve Simmons, Toronto Sun. You said you, you made the decision um, that the relationship wasn't going to work long term. What did you and the board determine that was the, what was the reason for that? You know, without getting into the specifics, Steve. I mean, you know, we we went through this process, and you know, you've got uh, you know new owners that bought into a company that are evaluating things, people, or the organization. Uh, we were evaluating the hockey club. Um, you know, I you know I mentioned uh, earlier the you know the the relationship between the GM and the and the and ownership is a, is an interesting one, and it's it's a it's a complex one, and it's and it's and it's very unique, and um, you know, you know, it, it, whether it's going to work or not is, is it's about a whole bunch of things, and so that evaluation was about a bunch of whole lot, a lot of things, including, you know, how the team was doing and how how last year finished up. It was a lot of different things that uh, that went into ultimately coming to a conclusion. Uh, Gertie Palawali, SCP24. Uh, this was obviously a surprise to many. Brian was just tweeting a couple of days ago about uh, him being thrilled to get the game back. He's at the Marlies game last night. Uh, when was Brian informed, and what was uh, his reaction? Uh, we talked to Brian first thing this morning, and uh, you know his reaction was, uh, as you would expect, one of class, uh, one of disappointment, um, but one of acceptance. To, to either he, he understands that this is part of the game and part of the industry, and it's a it's part of the industry that none of us like, and uh, and uh, but he respected the fact that ownership gets to decide who its general manager is, and uh, and uh, he uh, he was quick to point out the building blocks that have been put in place, and uh, as Dave just uh, just recognized him for, and uh, and so his reaction was just one of class. Uh, hi there, for either one of you. Um, and what does this decision, Kim Yoshikuri from for the Vancouver province, what does this decision mean for the pending or up in the air Luongo trade that's, that you guys are looking at at the moment? We never discuss pending transactions. First of all, it doesn't help get a deal done. Second of all, uh, we're not per permitted to do so. Um, players are, that are under contract to other clubs uh, remain off limits in terms of, of commenting. Was Raptus uh, CHCH News, but did Luongo play a factor at all in this decision? No, no, not at all. Dave? 
Uh, David Alter, Sportsnet 590, right here. Uh, Dave, you have a long-standing relationship with Brian. I guess for the fans out there that are kind of surprised about this decision, what will you bring different to the management structure and leadership role that we might see different from the last four or five years? Well, first of all, I, I think we think a lot of uh, along the same lines about how a team should play, as does our head coach. Um, but those of you, I think, that know Brian and myself, we maybe approach it a little bit differently. Um, uh, I think if you look back at um, our record or my record in Vancouver as a manager, you know, as a staff, we had a, a quality group with Steve Tambellini and Elaine Vigneault and Eric Crawford, a lot of people that we used together and, and spent a lot of time evaluating our team. I, I think if there's one difference that, and, and it may be uh, a positive or negative depending on you look at it, is um, I would say that we're a little more. I'm a little more patient um, in how I approach things. Um, maybe evaluate things a little bit longer. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think how the team should play and expectations. Uh, I think those are very similar. Dana McKeel from Rogers. Uh, Dave, how do you evaluate the lineup right now as you see it? Well, we have some work to do. Um, Again, we have some good building blocks. We have some good players. And, and again, when I talked about looking back on this team four or five years from now, I, I think people will say that a lot of the things that Brian Burke did were very, very positive and, and helped this team become successful. Um, some of those building blocks aren't ready to play here yet. And we have to find a way to um, br bridge that gap. And we have a very young team. We, we need to continue to search for players that can play right now to, to buy it, you know, buy us a little bit of time for those younger players to come along. Um, you know, we have some strength, there's no question. I think, I think we have improved uh, over the last 48 months in terms of, the, of our on-ice product, but we, we have some work to do and we need to make some changes to our lineup. When I, when I say that, it doesn't mean it's going to happen in a day or two. There has to be opportunities to improve it, making a, a, a change just to to move a body out isn't something that will happen because we have worked hard to put some some good young players on on our roster. Paul, Dave, uh, you're always a great sounding board for Brian. Does that relationship now go on with Claude and uh, and Dave as as you move on in your new role? Yeah, and, and Cliff and our coaching staff. Um, you know, this isn't about me taking over the team. I, I think that's an important factor. It's it's about the management group together moving forward and decisions are going to be made um, together and we need to you know we need to continue to discuss things we have quality people here we have some uh, again veteran NHL players that play the game that understand how to, what it takes to win uh, and you know we'll be discussing how we move forward together no question it's it's going to be a, a group effort and I think most successful organizations go about it that way Michael. Tom, uh, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. When Brian was here five or six years ago, he was talking about it was a, the start of a building phase. Are you, with new ownership, new management, are you looking at building again? Are you trying to get results quickly? Where does ownership stand on, on those issues? Well, I think, you know, uh, Dave can probably give you better specifics on the hockey side, but I think, uh, you know, rip well, of course, I mean, I can tell you our, our, our ownership uh, wants to win. That's what they want to do. They want to, you know, reward our fans. That is their singular focus here. It's all about winning. And, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, this, uh, but this decision really, I think, you know, I think um, Dave and his staff are looking at continuing a process here uh, that's been underway. And, you know, really the leadership change that we talked about uh, is, is more about uh, a tone and a voice of leadership than it is about changing gears and going in a different direction technically if um, if uh, without putting words in David's mouth no. that's right and it, we need to continue building the team it's not starting from scratch you know, we've we have some decisions to make on certain players we need we have some decisions to make on on contracts we have some decisions to make on you know again our style of play and, and how will the players we have fit into it um, but we've come a long way I know again it, it's hard to recognize that when you look at some of the things that have gone on, but it, the reserve list is much stronger. The group is much stronger. 
um, and we need to continue to build it to turn around and gut the franchise now would set it back a long way and it's not something I don't think anyone has any interest in doing. Rob? Dave, uh, Rob Leth from Global News. Um, I know you just got the job officially this morning, but have you been in uh, conversations with, with other GMs and is there a likelihood of any major transactions before the season starts next Saturday? I had a more difficult time trying to get a hold of my wife, so no, it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't one where I've been on the phone with anybody. I think it's, it's going to be, uh, we have some internal things to, to talk about. It's a shock for a lot of people. And uh, um, I think with uh, uh, our players, I, I think we'll, we'll be shocked a little bit by it. Um, you know, Brian had a pretty strong rapport with a number of them and was very good to them. So there'll be some, some uh, feelings, I think, there. Um, our staff, uh, I th you know, we have some, some, Things to discuss with them, so um, you know we're not going to spend a lot of time, um, uh, as Randy put it, grieving. But I, I think we uh, we have some things to do, and then you know, at the appropriate time, and once we're allowed to do things with other clubs, allowed to make moves, allowed to sign players, then we'll we'll be ready to push ahead. In the back. Tom, Mike Toth from News Talk 1010. Um, you have always uh, had great relations with the media. You work with a media conglomerate now. You work for a media conglomerate. Um, Brian's had some well-documented dust-ups with the media here the last few years. How much of a role does that play? Also, I ask this part very respectfully. He's had some personal issues. I can't even imagine what he was going through with the death of his son as a, a father myself. And then finally, um, why is he staying on as a senior advisor? Why not just wipe the, the slate completely clean? Three-part questions are always tough because you have to remember more than one thing. But uh, and first of all, by the way, Mike, everybody in this room basically works for Bell Rogers almost. So um, <laughs> let's not forget that. Uh, oh, no disrespect to the Toronto Star folks. Um, uh, what was your question again, Mike? <laughs> first of all, I had nothing to do with Brian's personal life, not at all. Uh, and no, not at all. I mean, Brian, you know, Brian had a, a style and. Uh, you know, we knew what we were getting when uh, when he was hired a number of years ago, and uh, and uh, this was really about a, a change in leadership voice and and leadership direction, uh, and and obviously the the team of people he put in place made the succession easy and seamless. Um, you know, despite the having to deal with the deal with the change and the disruption at this time. Um, because Brian has uh, extraordinary expertise and, uh, and 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 something that still can be valuable to me, valuable to the uh, to the board, uh, and you know it's not unlike what we do with Wayne Embry and the and the, and the Raptors. Uh, you know where he's he's there and available for uh, you know a sober second thought for somebody like myself or one of our shareholders. Uh, Rash. Rash Madani from Sportsnet. Yesterday you talked about the Raptors. Yesterday you dismissed your soccer coach, hire a new one. Today this. What happens on the basketball side now after the evaluation? Um, uh, well, first of all, today's the day to talk about hockey, I think, and uh, and uh, you know we've got some good news. We're all, we're all hoping for at uh, four o'clock today, um, but uh, you know so we'll talk about basketball a different day. I mean, obviously the team has uh, um, got off to a rough start and now it's heading in the in the right direction, and uh, you know. Um, but I mean, we're all being evaluated all the time, and uh, and uh, you know and. Uh, you know, Brian and his team are also in the midst of a building process, and as long as we continue to see progress, um, you know, that's that's what you always want to see in a process. Lance in the back. Lance from CTV. Where does this leave your head coach, guys? He was a Brian Burke hire, as we understand it. Have you talked to him, and where do you go with uh, with him from here? Well, um, first of all, yes, we have spoken to, to Randy, talked to him this morning. And again, going back to my earlier comments, my relationship with Randy goes back further than Brian's. I hired him in Manitoba as my head coach. In fact, back when it was per we were permitted to do so, um, I traded him to Anaheim for a second round pick. <laughs> so uh, Randy is, is a quality, quality head coach and we're fortunate to have him. Uh, we think as a management group that our players, the youth of our players, the uh, the direction we want them to head requires a coach like Randy Carlisle and we're we're thrilled that he's going to start the season with us in the back uh, in the back here between the cameras uh, Steve D'Souza from CBC uh, 
when Brian came in, he talked about a new philosophy for the team, or you know, a tougher team. Truculence was a word he often used. I'm just wondering, do you have a philosophy for the team, and what will fans see when the team hits the ice? It will be different from previous years. You know, again, you're not going to see a massive turnover. It's impossible to do so in today's game and actually improve your team. You can flip players all over, but if you look back at teams that have done that, you rarely have any type of success. We've been fairly fortunate to add players, uh, mostly through trade, that have been upgrades and helped our team. We've been able to add veteran players uh, like Lupo. We've been able to add young players like Gardner, Joel Colburn, who's you know who is a first-round pick and a very good prospect, Carter Ashton. We're going to continue to try to add building blocks and pieces like we have in the last 18 months or so, where we've had some su success doing that. Uh, in terms of how the team should play, we we need to have players to play a certain style. It's difficult to ask players that may not be capable of playing a certain style to do that. But as a group, we have to be more difficult to play against. And we talked, I answered the, answer the previous question about Randy Carlisle. Uh, we need a coach like that to push players a little bit outside their comfort zone. And uh, that's what we're expecting when, we, when the puck drops. Jonas? Jonas Siegel, uh, TSN Radio. Tom, back here. Was this process um, a look into you're deciding that Brian Burke wasn't the guy to, to move you in the direction or the right direction, or was this a matter of uh, you not seeing this club moving in that right direction? Was Brian the guy not to continue that process, or was the direction not where you wanted it to go? I, I think, like I said earlier, it was more about um, uh, leadership style and and fit, and, uh, and and you know, without getting into the specifics. I mean, it wasn't. You know, Brian has won a Stanley Cup. He's one of 23 people in the last 45 years that have won a Stanley Cup. Um, so he, you know, has a proven track record of, of success. Um, you know, did the the four years of missing the playoffs factor into the conversation uh, with the shareholders? For sure it did. But uh, uh, but we also recognize that we're in the midst of a building process and uh, and uh, and that we need to continue on that track and not and trying to head in a different direction. But at the end of the day, it was really looking for a different voice and, and a different leadership approach. Anybody else? We'll take a couple more. Rosie? Sorry, I would like to go back and try that Raptors question again. I think a lot of people, particularly out on fans, might be asking right now why it is that Colangelo, with a team that is filled equally, um, is being treated with patience while Brian Burke gets his ticket punched after four years. Well, uh, first of all, um, Brian Colangelo is in the last year of his contract, and so we're going to have to make a decision at some point in the next X number of months, um, and we will. And you know, so so it's not really you know, I mean, every circumstance is different. I guess, Rosie, you don't, you know, somebody mentioned the TFC and uh, Kevin hiring a new coach the other day. I mean, it's not like you're. Sort of trying to line all these things up at the same time or something. I mean, it's a, it's a function of circumstances and evaluating uh, things at certain times. And uh, and uh, the discussion uh, about the hockey club has been going on for uh, a few months. Can I just ask a follow-up? Yeah. Further to that, then, can you help us understand why the patients ran out? It seems so dramatically, so quickly. I mean, everybody's quite stunned, obviously. Well, I, I guess the, the news is coming as a shock, but I don't think the decision has happened overnight. Um, you know, I think, you know, this is a conversation that, uh, that the board and myself have been having for several months um, that ultimately came to a decision recently. But it was really the function. It, it's been a conversation that's been ongoing, and, uh, and we came to a decision. And then once we got to that decision, you know, I'm a firm believer in the, it's only fair to make the decision and move forward. Bruce? Um, sorry, from the post. So it isn't about the direction of the team, and it isn't about uh, what Bert Brian had accomplished or not accomplished. What was it that new ownership didn't like about Brian Burke's leadership style and the way he carried himself in and out of the organization? You know, I, Bruce, I don't want to get into specifics. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the relationship between a GM and owners is a complex, multifaceted, unique kind of relationship. It's not like a suit and, and his bosses. You know, it's not like... Uh, you know, a typical employer-employee kind of relationship. It's a very symbiotic kind of relationship. And, uh, I mean, Brian, when we were talking this morning, one of the first things he said is, you know, I get it. Ownership's change, and sometimes, you know, the, that, that relationship changes. And, uh, and so, uh, 
you know, it works or it doesn't work or some shade of gray in between, and, you know, at some point you ultimately make a decision. Brian had an extraordinary amount of autonomy under the previous ownership. Will Dave have that same degree of autonomy in terms of hockey operations that Brian had? You know, without getting into the specifics of contracts, but, it, but Dave has full authority over this hockey club. And, yeah. Anybody else? Is coming? Yes, Say that again, Catherine. Did you see this coming, Mr. Nonis? No. No, we were at the Marlies game last night together. Uh, came in this morning and was informed of the decision. Okay, thank, thanks for coming, everybody. Thank, thank you.